Now then crew and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Yes, we're still working on the Suzuki King Quad 500 AXI. I believe it's around about the 2020 vintage. It's not very old. It's only done 1800 kilometers from new. Now, in previous videos, we've done things like the engine oil and filter replacement, front diff, oil, uh, air filter. We've done the, just done the fuel filter and there was some oh, spark plugs as well. So on this particular video, we're going to take a look at those front brakes. Uh, on this particular model of Suzuki, it's got a rear wet brake, which is inboard. There's no calipers to get full of mud when you're going off-roading. But on the front, it still has the hydraulic calipers. So... Let's get one pulled off, take a look, see what the pads are like, maybe pop the pads out, give everything a bit of a clean up. I might need to replace the pads, I don't know yet. Let's find out. Here we go. Use. Now the front caliper is accessed by taking the front wheel off and usually the first thing that people want to do is undo the caliper from its mounts but don't do that. What we need to do is just crack off these two bolts here. They will hold the, um, the brake pads in position. A lot easier when the caliper is still mounted. There we go, look. One, two. Now be sure that your Allen key's all the way in on the heads because they can be quite soft and you can round them off pretty easy, especially on an older bike. Don't take them all the way out. Most of the way out is just fine. Right, now it's time to take the caliper off its mounts. Perfect. Okay, so we've got one mounting bolt here and another one just up here, look. And they are six millimeter cap heads. All the time, to be fair. Now they should be held in with thread lock on these bolts, but more often than not on off-road vehicles they don't do that. Let's find out. I doubt these have ever been off. Oh yes, thread lock. Perfect. Thread lock blue. Temporary. Right, here we go. Two. There we go, fantastic. Okay, so both mounting bolts are off. We can now pull the caliper back. We can take a sneaky peek. Right, said Fred. The main mission here is to see if we need to replace the brake pads or not. I like to do a visual inspection on them because, you know, front brakes are quite important and it is in for a service. Right, so let's finish off these. These are actually in really good nick, to be fair, the bolts. Quite often they can seize in. No. I'm just pushing a little bit on the pads because there's a spring at the back. I'm pushing that in. I can remove these by hand. The last thing you want to do is put a pair of pliers on the threads because that can, well, it can chew the threads up. There we are. Right, just flicking the caliper over a little bit. We've got the outer, sorry, the inner. Oh, that's in pretty good nick. It should last to the next service, I think. Let's have a look at the inner one. Need a flat screwdriver. If nothing else, we can get all the dirt out of these brakes and that'll help the pads to last a bit longer as well. Because no matter how much washing that you do, and Mrs. Mechanic spent ages washing this bike, you always get mud and stuff still stuck in the caliper. Just gonna remove that little spring plate at the bottom. And we'll just tip it upside down, get all the all the crap out of there. Give it a scrape round. We'll give it a blow out with the airline as well in a minute. They say it's not a full brake overhaul. I just want to basically make sure that everything is as it should be. Now the slider. Should be able to pull that out. There we go. Make sure that the grease is all good. We can stick some extra grease 
in there if need be, but it actually looked pretty good. What we do need to do is clean up these two points here. This is where the inner pad runs against, and as you can see, it's quite dirty, and it should have some kind of lubricant on there. And the same goes for on the pad itself. Again, it's just basically mud that's on the end of that pad. That pad sits in there like that, and it should be free to move in and out. And if it's got mud and grime in there, it's going to bind, which is going to mean the pad's going to sit against the disc and wear out a lot quicker. So we'll give the pads a bit of a wire brush. We'll wire brush these, and uh, we'll apply some, some of that Forch aluminium paste. I think it's pretty good for this kind of thing. We'll give the uh, caliper a little bit of a wire brush inside there. Give it a blow down with the airline. Put the whole thing back together. Easy. Right, to the bench. Need a wire brush. Right, two weapons of choice. A normal steel wire brush and a brass one as well. We'll start with a steel one first. Okay, pads. Let's get all this mud and stuff off them. In fact, we can even, we can even lose the mat. There we go, look. Brake pads of ATVs are not cheap, especially the good ones. So it's well worth giving these a refresh. There's still plenty of life left in them. I'll show you how to check the, uh, the wear on them in a minute. Cool, that'll do for that one. We'll come back to, there's one more thing to do on that yet. Let's get this bit out of the way first. I do brakes and a lot of stuff, but I don't make lots of videos on it. Because there's already a few on the channel about doing brakes on ATVs and motorcycles and stuff, so I don't see any point in repeating myself over and over again, just for the sake of another video. I'm using this brush because it's smaller, basically. There we go. Right. Now, where's the scriber? Okay, so this groove down the middle isn't just to help dissipate water and dirt and stuff and get it off the pad surface. It's actually a wear indicator. And according to Suzuki, and quite a few other motorcycle manufacturers, if you can still see the groove, your pad's still good to use. It's when the groove, or when the material's worn down enough for that groove to disappear, that's when you need to replace the pads. Pretty simple, isn't it? Now, to get that out, a hacksaw is the easiest way. Works really well. Just back blade. There you go, look. Look at that. Pulls all the dirt out for you. Perfect. So you don't want to do it too much because you'll start to dig into the pad, but if you're just back blading as well, you're only using the back side of the teeth. Excellent. See? Heaps of uh, wear left on those pads. Now it's always a good idea to give this a bit of a clean as well. Just while it's out. It doesn't take a second to pop it out and give it a clean. Because again, this spring, and that's what it is, it stops the pads from rattling. And it sits against, see that little groove on the top where it's a, it's a mark more than a groove, it's, it's just a wear point. That actually sits on there and pushes the pads down in the caliper body. Stops them rattling around, which helps to cut down on vibration and, and squeaks from the brakes. So it is important.
this kind of stuff doesn't take long. And let's face it, there's only two calipers on this bike, you know. It's not like you've got four to do, like on some quad bikes. Right, there we go, nice and clean. Now, the next bit is the what, we call, what I call the pad carrier, or the caliper mount, whichever you want to look at it. And remember I said before, the pad, the inner pad, sits in there like that, and it has to be able to move freely. As it's applied, it gets pushed this way, and then when it retracts, it goes back again. And if this bit here is not, uh, not smooth and lubricated, then it can impede the movement of the pad. And that's both on the ends of the pad, so we'll give those a bit of a clean. It's not important for the outer pad, but it is for the inner pad. Also, if you're buying cheap pads, this area here needs to be nice and smooth, and sometimes when they're stamped out of the metal, there's a big burr line down here. If that's the case, get your file out and just file it nice and smooth. It does make a difference, it really does. You'll thank me later. Either that or just buy quality pads to start off with. Spend the money, people. There we go. Super shiny, super smooth, ready for some grease a bit later on. Special grease, by the way. Okay, right, let's pop this in the vise and we'll give those contact points a bit of a clean up. Excellent. That's all it needs. Now, remember those two little pins that we undid first before we took the caliper you know, away from the mounts? Well, again, these are quite rusty. If you can see that on there, is it going to focus? Is it going to focus? Yeah, sort of got the focus. There you are, look. See, they're quite rusty. So get an, an nasty bit of mud on there as well. And the inner pad, as it sits in the caliper, you've got that pin there, look. It, again, it has to be able to slide across and it sticks. You know, it's even sticking when I'm trying to do it by hand because it's, you know, the pad kinks a little bit and it just jams on all that rough roughness on the pin, which again causes the pad to sit against the disc and wear down the pad material. Plus it goes whoosh, whoosh, whoosh when you're riding. It's not good really. So, next job is to get some fine sandpaper and just give those two pins a nice clean up. We'll use the vise for that. Here we go. Now, in this vise, it's got aluminium jaws, or aluminium jaws, depending on where you're from. So I can put that in without damaging the threads. If you haven't got aluminium jaws, then use some cardboard or something. Now, this is only P400 grit. It's really, really quite light. I don't want to take off the, uh, if I can, the, the zinc coating, or whatever coating they've got on these little pins, because otherwise it'll rust really quick. Just really getting rid of the dirt and making it smooth again. There we go. Like a baby's bottom. <laughs> right. Next piece. Here we go. There look. P400. Made in Switzerland, this stuff. Really good. And will do. So it doesn't take long. Okay, so what's left? Well, we've done the pad carry, that's good to go. We've done both the pins, the retaining pins. We've cleaned up both pads on the inner pad. We've done the ends. We should also really clean out where that pin runs inside the pad, because we're gonna be putting some grease on here, some special grease. And if there's dirt in there, it's gonna get straight into that grease and make it all gritty. So we'll do that in the vise, I think. Be easier. Here we go. Right, we'll just pop him in there, look. Mm 
looking pretty good. Where's my sandpaper? Maybe I can do a little trick with that as well. Perfect. I like the look of that. It's a lot better than this side, isn't it? Hello. Good job. Boom. So all we need to do now is give the caliper a little bit of wire brush round. We can use the brass wire brush for that so we don't damage uh, the piston or the dust seal that might be exposed as well. So we'll just go in there, give it a bit of a clean up, get us rid of some of the dirt and farm stuff. And then we can reassemble the whole thing, put some of that special forge grease on there, the aluminium paste, and bolt it all up. Here we go. Jeez, it's getting late. Mrs. Mechanic's going to go and get fish and chips shortly. I'll be in trouble. Right, so we're just going to clean off the dirt around the piston. I say brass wire brush is great for this job because it doesn't cause any harm to the seals and the rubbers and stuff. But it's still strong enough to get in most places and get all the dirt out. It's not going to take the coating off the piston either because they're so soft for these bristles. You could almost brush your teeth with one of these, couldn't you? Right, let's give it a blast out with the airline and we can stick it all back together. Okay, first job is that little springy plate he's putting back in down there. It's not handed, it can go in either way around on most calipers, it's not handed on this one anyway. Right, so make sure it's all the way down at both ends, which it is. And now we can refit the pad carrier, as I call it. There's plenty of grease I've checked in the in the sliders, so we don't need to re-grease it. There we go. Super job. Okay, now we've got the inner pad. So, first job. I'm going to get this stuff all my fingers, and I am, is to put some of this on the back of the pad. Again, a lot of motorcycle mechanics don't do this kind of stuff. Don't know why. Now, we also need to put some in those little grooves where the sliders run. Sorry, where, they, where the retaining pins actually run. Now, it's very important you don't get any on the pad material, obviously. Okay, so what's left now? Well, we've still got more to apply, and that's now on the ends of the pad. So just a little bit over there. There we go, look, that's cool. Flick it round. Try and do it so it's in focus. Get rid of the caliper for a second. There we go, look, that's better. A bit more room to work with. Now you don't need a lot, but you do need some. Otherwise, it's not going to benefit. Okay, this pad can now go back into the caliper. And to do that, we just drop it down there. Remember, it's spring-loaded, so we're just going to push down against that bottom spring, and that should snap into place. There we go, look. Right, it's now held, and we haven't got any of the silvery stuff on the brake pad, which is always good. Yes, I could have sanded the brake pad, but there's no point. They're just going to wear down even quicker then. You know, this brake pad, you know, it, it's matched to this disc. It's happy. Why waste brake pad? Okay, so we can get rid of the caliper again for a second. Pop it down there. And now we've got the outer pad. And if you look carefully on the outer pad, you can see the two contact points where the claw makes contact. So we're going to put a bit of 
bit of paste on those don't need to cover the whole pad just those two bits is good don't need to worry about those because this pad doesn't move this pads fixed but I do like to put a little bit in there look there we go right now that can now go in the caliper as well and it just slots in there like that and it's important that you have it all the way out so you have a gap for fitting it back on to your disc okay last but not least is the pins there look so we need some grease some aluminium paste call it by the right name Andy call it by the right name some aluminium paste on those pins because remember you know the pad <laughs> it's way off camera remember the pad slide the inner pad slides up and down this pin there we go look right that can now go back into the caliper and we'll do the furthest one away from the pivot makes the other one a bit easier so I'm going to push that pad all the way down push it against the spring and it should go in there we are here's my screwdriver thing there we go beautiful and we'll tighten those up when the caliper's back on the bike that's only finger tight for now okay second pin just in case you missed the first one because I was probably off camera pretty good at being off camera these days useless okay same again Sam pop that in there push the pads down a bit and that should just whittle through and now we can just screw it back up super right as you can see there's not that much of a gap between the pads so we'll get a flat screwdriver and just give it a little jiggle and it'll push that pad just a bit further out and then it's ready for going back on the bike right nice clean flat screwdriver just clean it on my trousers make sure that inner pads all the way in as well there we go super job right back on the disc lovely jubbly now remember the mounting belts should have where, where the hell are you there we are look the mounting belts should have thread lock on them so we've got the forge k120 the blue just gonna pop that on there that just a little bit not a lot, maybe a bit more than that. Jeez, what the hell's all this crap going on? There we go. About that much is good. Clean the finger off. And now we can line the caliper and fit that bolt back in. There we go, that's one. And the other one. Super job. Now there'll be a torque setting for these bolts, so we'll go and find that in the service manual right now. There we go, page 4B-1. So, install the brake caliper in the reverse order removal, apply a small uh, quantity of thread locks to the front brake caliper mounting bolts. One, we've done that, excellent. Tighten the brake caliper mounting bolts one to the specified torque. The torque setting is 26 Newton meters. Easy. Now, these little pins here that hold the pads in, they need to be 18 Newton meters. Jeez. There we go. That 
That's a lot. So, no need for any new brake pads on this service. I'm sure that those pads will last until the next service in a thousand kilometers time. Now, obviously, I've still got the front right caliper to do exactly the same as what we've just done on the front left. There's no point in you watching that. It's going to be the same thing over and over again. However, when you finish the job and you've done both calipers, remember to pump the front brake. Make sure the pistons are all the way out and there's no gap or a small gap, which should be between the pads and the disc. The last thing you want is the rider to get on the bike, come to use the front brake and the lever goes straight to the bars because you've pushed inadvertently the pistons back into the calipers a little bit. That would be a bad thing because they need the brakes, especially when they're expecting to work. Okay, crew, that brings us to the end of this video. The video, another video on the uh, Suzuki King Quad 500 AXI, about a 2020 vintage. If you enjoyed it, why not subscribe to the channel? Ring the bell. That way you won't miss out on any future videos uh, working on this particular bike and many, many others. If there's a week where you're bored and I haven't uploaded a video, don't panic. There's about 550 other videos on the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel for you to peruse and fill in all that free time that you've got. Now you can also communicate to, to me through Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Uh, you'll also find my email address down the bottom in the description, andymechanic at live.co.uk. Feel free to flick me an email. I'll do my best to reply back to you. I'm quite a busy chap though, so if I don't reply back, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just too busy. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you can do that uh, through Patreon. You can become a patron to the channel, um, or you can send some money through on PayPal. You know, one-off donations, that kind of stuff. Uh, it's the same email address, and a mechanic at live.co.uk. Okay, crew, well, that's the end of this video. There will be many, many more, I can guarantee it. Until next time, cheers, over and out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>